Welcome to this very special edition of the morning drive. We are actually not in a car at all. I wish this would be cool if this was in a car. We are in a radio uh, production room. So we are dropping our newest mixtape, guys. That's right. We're recording our newest mixtape. Uh, we're starting a band. It's called The Venom Band. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, today we're doing the morning drive a little bit differently. We have the opportunity to be able to record this here in this studio thanks to our new editor and producer. Zach, go ahead and introduce yourself. I don't know who you people are, so you guys need to get out of the production room. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm coming on production, uh, trying to just up the quality. Content is going to stay the same. I want to stress that. Um, I'm not trying to come in and make these guys do anything different. They're still going to be making the same great content they did before. I'm just trying to get it from new angles, better angles, and uh, hopefully you know, some new editing tricks and things like that so we can uh, just improve quality overall. But uh, once again, it's going to be all these guys, you know. You yeah. said great quality before, huh? Okay. <laughs> we hope so. Uh, but Zach's actually been one of my pretty much lifelong friends. We've known each other since middle school. Uh, so we've kind of grown up together and been best friends for the longest time. And he ended up just kind of being over with me and Sean. And uh, while we were working, it was actually when we first started working on the 240, he kind of took over doing camera type stuff. And he just, he was doing the camera angles and everything so much better than we were. And he, he was just making the flow a lot better. And it was really helping Sean and I out because we were kind of able to focus on the car a little bit more. And we didn't really have to worry about doing uh, a video as much. So we kind of decided, uh, you know, it'd be a really good idea to go ahead and have him as part of the team if he wanted to, and he did. So uh, we definitely have kind of expanded this to more of a four-person team. Joy is kind of our second camera person. She's in the background. Yeah, I don't know if she, you can even she see can, it on the GoPro. She can stand up real quick, but, and you'll uh, see her. She can There's come Joy. stand over here. Damn it, Joy. So, uh, <laughs> She's got to drink her coffee, yeah, of course. Yeah, whole team. Whole we all have coffee. Right all iced studio. coffee. Every single yeah. one of us. Hey, mine's cold brew. It's a <laughs> Yeah, mine's iced. <laughs> I got the, the white girl special, you know. I tried to get the sugar. <laughs> I tried to get the sugar free from McDonald's, and they sit there and tell me like they didn't have good, it. Okay, it's good. It tastes good. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. I mean... But, but anyways, back on track. <laughs> this is supposed uh, to get off track. Yeah, it kind of, sort of. Uh, but uh, overall, we're kind of doing this. There's been a lot of changes with kind of what's going on with Venom Racing uh, in terms of the channel. And that's mostly with Zach coming on board. Then we also got the new project. Sean, if you want to go ahead, kind of talk about the new project a little bit for us. So our project right now, I mean, you'll obviously see the intro to the build series. It's a 2016 Mustang GT Performance Pack Edition. And pretty much we wanted to go ahead and get it more of a popular platform. And I wanted to actually a new car, to be honest with you. After John bought the G35, <laughs> um, I kind of wanted a different daily driver. So right now I have a 2015 Toyota 4Runner, which is going to be for sale now. Well, it is for sale. And um, I've been driving that around. It's a perfect daily driver for the S2000. They kind of have both of them. But after John got a sports car again, and it really motivated me to get another car. So I went ahead and... I was like, you know what I was going through there? I was looking at 370Zs for the longest time, Nismos, and they just, honestly, people were bidding them up quite a bit. I actually bid on an LFA, not an LFA. Wow, um, man, did you That win? would be great, an LFA. <laughs> I wish. Man, we really are going up a little Yeah, world. no joke. Dang. Hey, we jumped up 80 subscribers the other day, you know? You gotta risk yeah, it we to got to Time to buy an LFA. <laughs> yeah, we got 40 subscribers, and we decided LFA was yep. the best way to go for yep. that. Okay, that's, how, that's how we get up there, that's you know? That's right. <laughs> but, no, I actually bid on a RCF. That's what it is, Lexus yeah. RCF, and that went a little bit more than I wanted to pay. That would have been really cool. Pay. And also, I bid on a Porsche Cayman in 2015, and the, the the base Cayman. And actually, they're pretty decent vehicles, and they're not that expensive. I mean, relatively, for a 2015 Cayman, you can buy one for around $40,000, which for a Porsche is not that bad. And no. they're supposed to handle. And it's not a boxer. Yeah, I mean, people <laughs> actually compare those when they're looking at cars. I mean, they're looking at uh, S2000 CRs versus, like, the Porsche Cayman and whatnot. So I thought it'd be a good, fun daily driver. Being a non-turbo would be a little bit more reliable and whatnot, but... Eventually, the bid went up too much where it was just like by the time you pay your fees and everything else and stuff, it's not going to be worth it. So on the Mustang, we actually we bid on it out of state, which is the first time I've ever done that before because really, I mean, the pictures, you cannot get a great an idea of what the car is actually like. So yep. 
Um, I actually, we actually got the car for 8,800, which isn't that bad. I mean, for 30,000 miles on it, I mean, fully loaded out model. And what was your max bid again? Didn't you have a max bid for it? Um, I actually put the max bid at 13,000. Yeah, so that's... I figured I'm glad I didn't get it for 13,000 no after um, <laughs> everything said After done. seeing some of the <laughs> right. damage. Right. Yeah. So uh, the car is actually not in bad shape. It runs and drives, um, relatively. The front end is a little bit more twisted than what we expected from the pictures. So yeah. Um, actually, we're going to take to the frame shop on Monday. Today's Saturday, so we're going to go ahead and get that ready. And you'll see that in the next video and whatnot, and we'll see the damage. We might actually have to end up buying a new rack and pinion and little frame rails and weld it in and stuff. Yeah. We might have to if they can't pull it all out. So yeah. we'll see from there. But, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a risk you take when you're buying out of state. So I would recommend if you can find one local to bid on a local one before you do that. But And right. speaking of cutting and welding the frame rail, that's actually what we're about to do to the G35. Yep. So if anyone even cares, the G35 build still does no, exist. No, no one cares. <laughs> probably. No one nobody cares. probably cares. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the biggest thing with the G35, I actually kind of daily drove it for a while. I actually drove, drove it here to the studio today um, without like, a second headlight or a fender. <laughs> it's not nighttime. Um, it's fine. It's not nighttime. I, I mean, it runs. I mean, it drives great. It honestly, it's, it's a great driving car. Uh, I definitely, I need to replace one of the wheel bearings. I know that's like one of the kind of somewhat immediate, immediate things I need to take, get taken care of. But in terms of the build, the biggest thing was I kind of, I didn't necessarily make the mistake, but when I bought that car, I did kind of put all of my savings into getting that car. Uh, so I didn't have immediately all of the funds to go ahead and and buy the parts to fix it, kind of like Sean does with with the Mustang, which is honestly probably the proper way to do it. Uh, but sometimes you can find cars on there. Like I actually had a buddy that just bought a Ford Fusion off of there, 2015 Ford Fusion. I think he got it for like 3,500 bucks with like 60,000 miles. Great car. Literally just needs a rear bumper. Like I don't know why that car even got totaled because wow. it's just missing the rear bumper. Everything else is fine. Are you sure there's like, <laughs> like no frame damage or anything? No, there's like nothing. Yeah, Literally, it's just he just needs the rear bumper. Hmm. Uh, and so you know he's he started daily driving it like that. I mean, obviously you'll, you're fine without just a rear bumper. It's not right. that big of a deal. It's just aesthetics for the most part. So, but we actually did. Uh, I ordered. I just got the the new fender in for the front. I actually have a new hood on the car as well. Um, front bumper I ordered, but they haven't even shipped it yet. So I'm still. Waiting on that. I think it's kind of a special order. I actually went with a, a pretty cool aftermarket style bumper. You, you didn't go so. with the Vader kit, did you? We're not going to cut it all. No, the we're not doing the Vader kit. <laughs> oh, not. damn. And it'd be kind of cool, but at the same time, like I have mixed feelings on those. Uh, if we hit 100,000 oh, no. subscribers <laughs> in, in two months, no. we'll do it. If we, if we hit 100,000 subscribers. <laughs> in, in two months. No, 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 no. no, no. We're months. not doing the if, Vader if, kit. If we hit 100,000 subscribers, we're buying an LFA. You heard it here first, okay? <laughs> <laughs> LFA on the way for 100,000 no. subs. In all seriousness, if we hit 100,000 subscribers in two months, we will do something similar to the Vader, but not the Vader. I will say that. And so I, that's another I, thing, too, with our channel. We do have a lot of build series in yes. progress. Um, Y'all probably already noticed that. The I've S2000s are kind of... four carbs by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Too many projects, right? <laughs> now, the yeah. S2000s, I wouldn't necessi necessarily say that they're still in going because they're kind of... I mean, they're not really a build, I would say. They're, right. They kind of are, but they kind of aren't. We're always kind of tinkering on them on yep. the, for the most part, but they're running and driving in great shape. And I still occasionally daily drive mine. Right. <laughs> I yeah. mean... I love dri I love daily driving my S two thousand. Been daily in it for three years, so there's there's a lot of times that I'll just drive it to and from work just to drive it. I know Sean doesn't do that as much as I do, but well, I definitely put the mileage on my car. Yeah, I think it's so. important. And one thing we promise: the end of builds are coming. Yeah. Okay, we are finishing <laughs> yeah. builds now. Yeah, um, we're trying to focus kinda, on them. Yeah, we've we've piled up quite a bit, but we are. Uh, we are going to finish some of the builds. I promise. <laughs> I, I mean, realistically, we have about a total of. Four builds yeah. going on right now, probably, uh, which really isn't too bad. It's not terrible. It's pretty ma manageable. It's just, it's it's tough because of our work schedules and like all of us having to kind of be at the same place at once. It can get tough to to record and film stuff and uh, kind of get content going. You know, sometimes one of us might want to be working on the car, but nobody else is there, so we had to kind of do it by ourselves, which happens. As that's kind of how it is. But uh, we're getting to the point that. I think we should have two builds done within the next yeah. month or two. Yeah. So and see, and also we learned how to clone ourselves as well too. So that sometimes that'll help out yeah. when we're in the garage by ourselves. Now the Just Mustang, I'm actually since it's my only, it's gonna be my daily driver, and I'm yep. really trying to sell the Forerunner right now. I'm really gonna try to pump that out within the month or two. That's kind of my my goal for that car. So it should be done pretty soon. The G35, it's really almost done as well. Yeah. So we're gonna try to finish that one out as well, and then really focus on the 240 and the Celica builds after that. And 
little things on the S2000 because we also have the fall Boston Mountain Tour coming up. Yep. Where it's that big S2000 meet that I've, I've we've posted two videos so far of the last events and everything. So we're going to get ready for that event and everything else. So you'll see a little bit of prepping for that. But then you never know. We might have to find something else, you know, if we hit that 100,000 subscribers, you know. Yeah, I mean, we're going to have to months. figure out what happens when we import the LFA, but it's <laughs> once again, it is coming. <laughs> I'm actually, oh, to yeah. be honest, though, I actually am super excited, though, about the Mustang build. That When people see this video, <laughs> oh, my goodness, when you guys awesome. hear the exhaust on this Mustang, I cannot tell you <laughs> how shocked you Just go ahead and have your pants down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> While you're watching I, the video, I, I don't care where you are. I you're don't in know. a public library. Um, <laughs> if you're sitting at a Starbucks on your laptop, <laughs> just pull your pants down before you start watching that well, video. Um, uh, be careful I, on the airplane, though. That's, it's not frowned upon right, in the I, I wouldn't do it on an airplane. I'm pretty sure that's going to <laughs> but be But if you're on a helicopter, uh, do it on a helicopter. Right. <laughs> I think by the time this video goes up, that you're watching right now, the morning drive, um, we will probably have the Mustang build up. I think is we should plan. have the intro um, at least. So, yep. and I believe we have the exhaust in the intro. We'll link yes. that down in the description and maybe even an annotation somewhere. Uh, y- you have to hear this. It is no joke. One of the best cars I have heard in person. The I bad mean. thing about it was when we started it up, my neighbor, she's about. 85 years old. <laughs> well, they say that you can awaken the uh, dead. Yeah. It kind of <laughs> did the opposite. Um. Well, she's no longer with us at this point. I thought point. that was what happened with the front of the car, not the exhaust. <laughs> that was a crowd, you know? That, yeah, that was that all was the crowd. protesters. Okay. Shut up, yeah, right. the crowd. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just giving you guys a quick update. Um, anything else you guys want to hit on? Yeah, uh, we will have a couple of random videos, too, I'll say. Uh, for instance, like uh, Joy, she has a 350Z, which, uh, unfortunately, on the way of moving back here where we are at, she... Uh, had what we would like to call a drifting mistake, and it really wasn't. She just hit a pole at a <laughs> gas station. <laughs> a woman driver. <laughs> <coughs> sorry, what was that? Sorry, I had something in my throat. Uh, oh, so we, she... we just lost any sponsorships <laughs> right there. <Yeah. laughs> so she, um, she essentially uh, kind of dented in her rear quarter panel on the passenger side pretty good. So we went ahead and we ordered some overfenders for the car. Uh, so those should be coming in hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And once they do, we'll kind of do a one-off video showing how to install those. Um, then we we're actually planning on vinyl wrapping her whole car. So we'll kind of have a video on vinyl wrapping because that's kind of something that I'm very interested in. Uh, same thing with the Celica. Celica is going to get vinyl wrapped possibly fairly soon. Um, I've already started looking at all of the vinyl and I'm considering ordering all of it <laughs> for the Celica. <laughs> Wrap it before you tap it, guys. Yeah, uh, no joke. <laughs> and so another video that we're going to do a one-off series on is my dad has a 1970 SS Chevelle, and we're actually going to put a front coil over suspension all in the whole front. Yep. It's a speed, I think it's a speed tech um, front assault kit, and it has like a front sway bar, has a coilovers for the front end and things like that. So we're going to be installing that pretty soon. So look out for that. And um, any other really little small? Well, uh, I just think that Thomas here is uh, finishing up the uh, the wiring for the 240, yeah. so that should be coming soon. More updates on the 240 build. Um, yeah, and the wiring, we're kind of... Uh, basically, what we're trying to do, since the car was completely stripped out, because I just built my own chassis harness and everything for it uh, back when I had it, and I you know I didn't have... I had some of it, but not all of it whenever I got it back, and it was all not intact, so I had to redo a lot of it, as you guys saw in the, in the first episode. But essentially where we're currently at with it is I'm just trying to get it started and running with the stock ECU, but a lot of the EGR and a lot of other sensors and stuff have actually been deleted. I've just gone ahead and just depinned them off of the connector for the ECU. So we're in a situation where I'm not getting spark from the ECU right now, and I don't know if it's because I don't have like the igniter pro- uh, wired properly. Um, there's a lot of different things that tie into the way those things work. So uh, I might end up just going to what I did before and just doing a full standalone system because it's really, really easy to wire a standalone system and get the engine running. Um, I mean, that's something I can easily knock out in a full day and have it running on just a full standalone computer. Uh, so we're really considering doing that too. I mean, the biggest thing is that's when I hear that motor run just so we know it doesn't have a rod knock or anything. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing, even if it's just for like 10 seconds. Uh, so that's kind of what we're working on. Uh, and I, I mean, that, we should hopefully get it started this week. Um, that's kind of the goal is to have it started this week. That way we can really get another big, big update on that build. And then after that, the Celica, which I've been waiting so long to put the 2J in the Celica. Like we have the 2J sitting in the garage, just waiting to go in the Celica. Uh, so as soon as the 240 is done, we're going to be going back to the Celica. Um, and we're going to be putting the 2J in. I really want to get the 2J in. I also want to get the 2J started. So I've got all the nuts and bolts for for the transmission, the new clutch and everything that I, that I ordered for it. So 
we pretty much have everything we need to put that engine in the car. We just got to get to a point that we can actually do it. Yep. Is there yeah. Anything else y'all want to touch on? Really? Yeah. I got any. I think that's mostly uh, it. No, I think that's mostly it. Uh, we're just looking forward to getting some of these builds done, yep. and that's the fun part. So we'll have videos on that when those builds are done and stuff. You know, we'll give you updates as those come. So. I, I'm I'm super excited though to finish some of these finally, you know, and get some of these cars running, yep. yeah. especially the Mustang. Yeah. I swear, that, at least it's already running. So awesome. yep. so, I mean, it's already technically it's already <laughs> running. But another thing is too on this morning drive, go ahead and put any questions you have for yes. us in the comments below. And what we'll do is actually in the next morning drive, we'll answer all of your questions. So this is kind of like a Q and A session, and then you just put your questions in the previous videos, and we'll answer them in the next yep. one as well too. So. That's another thing with this. Yeah, I and mean, if there's anything specifically that you just didn't see, like in a video, that you might just have a quick question about, sometimes we might be able to just answer that in the comments. But if it's kind of like a pretty big question that we want to talk about, that's the ones that we're going to be bringing in on this. So if you guys have fairly big questions, like if you want to know the process about something or like some, I mean, I'm just pulling stuff out of my ass at this point. But <laughs> if there's anything that like actually involves us having to explain quite a bit, then we'll definitely add it onto here. Um, and I mean, it can really be questions about anything. You can. Ask us our dick size, and we probably won't tell you, <laughs> or we'll lie. We but <laughs> but probably, I guess you can ask. There was a chance. It. There was a chance. He said probably, so we might tell you. <laughs> but you like I said, we'll probably lie. <laughs> I'm a shower, not a grower. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> isn't everyone? Well, I just want to thank you guys for bringing me on. You yep. know, it's going to be awesome. We're oh, yeah, glad to, to have you, Zach. Yeah. Thanks for taking some of the editing oh, for us. Another thing about yeah. Copart, <laughs> too. Yeah. Hey, one last tip for Copart or any auto auction online. No, so, I'm sorry. We're out of time. We're out of time? Nah, yeah, we're out of time, Sean. <laughs> Snoop Dogg, oh, you, you can stay back over there. Sit back in your corner, man. <laughs> All right, so, sorry about that. Snoop Dogg's getting a little bit out of control. Or what's his name? Snoop Lion is what his name nah, is. No, I think he switched it back to Snoop Dogg. I'm oh, pretty okay. sure. Uh, I, I think he tried the Snoop Lion. It didn't work, so he switched back. Uh, I didn't even Snoop Doggy Dog. Okay, well you stay over there in your corner. All right. Well, um, another thing is about Copar and stuff. So Snoop Doggy Dog. Snoop Dog. I think that might have been the whitest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Yo, homie, leave you, it up to you Sean. That Snoop Doggy Dog. <laughs> That's like something that. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'll have to, oh, and I'll have to put that in the video. I'll have to put yeah. the song. <laughs> so I drop it like it's hot. Now, so um, another thing is, is like you're even though your max bid might be eight thousand or something like oh, that, yeah. you got to keep in mind there are fees that's going to go along with that. So you yeah. might end up paying fifteen, twelve hundred dollars in fees. So that's how they really get you. So be cautious of that and look up their fees before you figure out a max bid because a lot of times it'll cost you a lot more than what you expect. Yeah. And then. When you're finished with a car, it's, you have a rebuilt title. So the thing is with that is that it's going to be worth about 25% less of what a clean title car will be. So you might be better off in some cases if you're looking to try to actually flip cars on rebuilt title. Yeah. Sometimes it's not worth it. So it's keep that in mind those. when you're trying to – I mean, some some banks don't even loan on them. So yeah. um, keep that in mind if you're trying to actually flip them. Now, if you're building it for yourself and you're just trying to have a cheaper – have an expensive car and get it for about half the price or maybe – Three fourths of the price, something, and that's okay if you plan on keeping it. But that's just one thing to keep in mind too. I want to kind of put that point across. And the, and the good thing is, is Copart actually does put this information out on their website. So if you want to kind of get an idea of overall exactly what you're going to be spending whenever you do a bid, you can kind of guesstimate like, oh, if I buy a car for four thousand dollars, they have a chart. They'll show you like what the fees will be if you win that car within that four thousand dollar range. And then they have you know like if you buy it on the internet, it's the internet fee and all these other fees. So you can kind of get yourself a really good idea on how much you're going to pay total, and it's really good to kind of keep that in mind. So you can kind of go in, if you have an idea of exactly what you want to go to on a car, like what your max bid is going to be, look at the fees for what your max bid is, and then just put whatever the fees are on top of that so you really know what you're actually going to be paying. So And keep in mind, too, the estimated um, value of the vehicle that you see on there, that's for a clean title, perfect yeah. car. So keep that in mind. Don't let that deceive you, okay? Yep. Um, that's one thing. So we hope you guys enjoyed this podcast slash podcast morning drive. <laughs> Go ahead and leave any questions you have below. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell so you'll be notified Ding. anytime we release a new video. Um, go ahead and hit like so it really helps get the channel out there. And we really appreciate the support. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Yep. Bye, right. guys. Right. Send, it. It. <laughs> Send it. Send <laughs> it.